Now that you've found UBN Radio and discovered our quality talk shows, it's time to spread the word to friends, family, and the universe. 24 hours of music and talk. Radio without limits. That's why people keep coming back for more. That's UBNRadio.com. Jump off that exhausting hamster wheel and into balanced living with Dr. Marissa. Promise you joy in the mystery. Dr. Marissa, also known as the Asian Oprah. Her mission, to be a beneficial presence on the planet. Her purpose, to be your personal advocate to live, laugh, love, learn. Her life motto, don't die wondering. Take back your life with Dr. Marissa Pay. And welcome. You are tuned into my weekly talk radio show called Take My Advice. I'm not using it. Get balanced with Dr. Marissa every Tuesday at Naturally High Noon out of the Sunset Gower Studios on Universal Broadcasting Network and syndicated every Thursday at 7 and Saturday at 11 on my CNBC News Radio channel, KCAA. AM 1050, and now FM 106.3 and FM 106.5. And this is a show about hope and happiness. So there's no gossip, no scandal, and no K-words, no Kardashian talk at all. Instead, I want you to focus on your own reality show, your life, and how you can be happy 88% of the time. And as you, as per usual, at the beginning of my show, I do my peace shout outs, peace in and peace out to all those fabulous people that I got to rendezvous with this week. And uh, Stephen from Enterprise, thank you so much for putting me in a great loner. And all of the fabulous Abraham Hicks workshop friends, old and you, uh, I just uh, was absolutely inspired at once again by uh, one of my favorite teachers, Abraham through Esther Hicks. Uh, some of the highlights were sacrifice all your negative emotion for happiness. And that's what I strive to do and try to splatter you with that kind of a message too every week. So I wanted to give you a heads up too that next week is my 200th week on the air. Actually, it's my 200th show on the air. So I started on internet uh, four years ago, went to CNBC News Radio, KCAA, to, two a a to an AM station, to two FM stations, to other networks, to over 100 countries now splattering you with hope and happiness, and 100,000 plus listeners, So I and over 42,000 YouTube views as well since the advent of cameras in the studio. So... I wanted to celebrate in a big way. So I'm bringing you an amazing, incredible, powerful panel with three amazing favorite teachers of mine, Neil Donald Walsh, best-selling author of Conversations with God, along with my big brother, Dr. Michael Bernard Beckwith, past guest and the founder of Agape, one of the teachers from The Secret, and then another past guest, Bishop Carlton Pearson. So you will not want to miss this next week on Take My Advice. I'm not using it. Get balanced with Dr. Marissa. And I'm also going to have, when I go on location, just to let you know, uh, in a couple of weeks, I'll be at the Conscious Life Expo and bringing you Don Miguel Ruiz again, who has been on my show in the past, the the mega best-selling author of The Four Agreements, which, which has been on the New York Times bestseller list for seven years. So I continue to try to bring you the most inspiring people on the planet to give you ideas and encouragement for more hope and happiness and forget the CNN constantly negative news. So, and as far as you know, today is, uh, this is the last week of the month. So it's Marvin Gaye time, not literally, although it would be nice to get him on the air. Uh, but it is sexual healing with Dr. Marissa series today. So if there are any kids in the car, you might want to listen to this later because it is a, is it's an adult show. However, I am determined to make pleasure a G-rated topic because we really don't talk about it in, a, in an open way. We don't learn about it in school. We probably don't get the best modeling from our own parents and relationships. And our friends are not necessarily the, the best teachers for how to, how, to, how to have more pleasure in your life. So that's why I started this series. And today... 
in my uh, my daily Google Play, I found uh, my guest, uh, Veronica Monet, is a certified sexologist and anger management specialist who helps couples to connect with compassion and create vibrant, heart-centered, love-term relationships. Her five steps to exquisite partnership is a unique approach to relationship difficulties that transform conflict into deep intimacy. Without further ado, please welcome Veronica Monet to my show. Yay! <laughs> so I ask my guests usually uh, an opening question as follows. I have a friend who doesn't have an answering machine. She has a questioning machine. And when you call her, it says, who are you and what do you want? So Veronica, who are you and what do you want? Oh, wow. That's a really <laughs> question. Um, I'm just a person who grew up in a very troubled, dysfunctional family, saw a lot of discord between my parents, went on to have my own very troubled marriage, mm -hmm. and now I'm on a mission to help people realize the same healing journey that I have, which is today I'm enjoying the relationship of my dreams. That's fabulous. <laughs> And I and what caught my eye when I when I found you was you have a website called Shame Free Zone, yes. and uh, that absolutely is something that I the reason why I started this series was the the extraordinary number of women who sound like they have the same kind of. Uh, 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 what you just shared about who you are and how you came about to where you are now. And, and I am in that number. <laughs> I resemble <laughs> that story as well. And, and I knew, I knew, and I, and I love the fact that I get to on this show, bring on people who can teach me and help my listeners as well heal from that kind of a past so that our relationships don't continue to repeat the troublesome ways. And, and, and uh, we, I purposely did not pre-interview you because I wanted to get to know you on the air and kind of have this unfold spontaneously. And, I, and I'm no pressure, but you are uh, my coach today because I, I'm starting a Kickstarter campaign on my love life once oh, again. Yes, good, good, good. I'm glad. Because, well, go ahead. It's helpful to know where your coaches come from, mm -hmm. uh, what their background is. So I, I've got the, you know, the certification as a sexologist, a sex educator, an anger management specialist, and a relationship coach. But really, uh, what I think counts the most is um, experience. Yes. What have you lived through? And I've lived through a lot. Um, I grew up watching my parents in a domestic violence situation. I went on to have my own. Mm. Um, so I have literally uh, recovered from domestic violence uh, from both sides. I really don't see it as kind of the victim perpetrator model that so many people do. I see it as a disease that kind of afflicts our culture. Mm -hmm. And what's interesting is that's a really loaded term that most people don't want to identify with. And I can understand that. Um, but there's always precursors, these, these slippery slopes that can take us down that road. Um, and a lot of people are doing these things and they kind of excuse it. Mm -hmm. So my, um, you know, I, I look at the, my slippery slope and I've, I don't, I don't think it's okay to uh, call somebody names. I don't think it's okay to slam doors. I don't think it's okay to throw a dish. Um, I'm surprised how many of my clients think that sort of thing is okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But well, it's, <laughs> I, I can see how someone would say, well, I'm just uh, un, unleashing my anger and, right. and releasing the anger. And I'm all about venting. But I, I do believe that there are ways to vent safely and without hurting anyone, including yourself. You and can actually negotiate with your, your partner on that and say, hey, you know, rather than have our nonviolent conversation, what I'd really like today is to just vent. I want to I wanna extirpate all this, this 
a horrible feeling that's inside me. Do you have bandwidth for that? But see, that's negotiated mm-hmm. and that's agreed to. Mm-hmm. That's a lot different than blindsiding somebody with a lot of insults and us verbal assaults, which really shuts down the relationship. Absolutely. So, so define for me what you mean or what you talk about when it comes to shame. Oh, shame covers so many things. Yes. Uh, and, and here's a really important distinction. I think that um, some people will say that there's good shame and bad shame, and I disagree. Okay. I think that there's guilt. Uh, guilt can be a really good thing. It mm-hmm. can be the thing that drives your conscience. You feel guilty. It's usually about something that you did. We don't feel guilty about ourselves. We feel ashamed of ourselves. Mm. But we feel guilty about what we've done. So that can be something that can tune you into what behaviors might I want to modify. Okay. What? Well, let me get shame. personal for a second. Yeah. What I feel shame about... Um, my the way my body looks okay i feel shame about uh thinking about having a a sexual relationship without commitment i feel shame about well right now i'm feeling a little shame about even talking about this stuff out loud because this is not something we're supposed to talk about um i i feel shame about uh, like, like one, one minute I'll go, Oh, you know, it would be great to have a physical relationship with this person. And you you know, I, I go all the way up to the edge of making the plans and then I'll, I'll go, what am I doing? I don't even know this person or I don't even know if I like this person. Why would I, uh, uh, say, okay, I know you want to jump me so so let's schedule a time to have that happen you know it, it, and it's it's as real as right now that I'm going through this where I'm so torn as to well it's wrong to have sex without a meaningful relationship or is it wrong without to uh, to have sex so so all of those levels of shame tell me how to feel better about myself in all those conditions, if you could. <laughs> First of all, Marissa, Sorry. I just want to say, wow, I'm, I, it hurts when I hear any woman say she feels bad about the way she looks, um, her body. Mm-hmm. And, and I think it's ubiquitous. I think all women have body shame. Mm-hmm. Um, the culture is really kind of bent upon making sure that we do. Yeah. Um, so and not because I, I'm kind of tired of hearing about how we're pummeled with perfect bodies, Mm-hmm. Uh, images of perfect bodies. We're, we're actually being pummeled with images of bodies that do not exist. Um, so with all the things that they do now with modifying the photos, uh, there is absolutely nobody walking on this planet that looks like the pictures that we look at. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. that's that's just ridiculous. Right. It's like trying to right. compare ourselves to cartoons. Um, <laughs> but, but second of all, what I heard you share was a combination of guilt and shame okay. and fear. Hmm. So can can I kind of parse that yes. out? Yes, uh, please do. And before you do, though, for those of you who just joined us a little late and you're wondering who I'm talking about shame and guilt with, this is Veronica Monet, and she is uh, someone that I, a certified sex therapist slash sexologist slash everything that I'm picking her brain and her heart today on the air because it is the last week of the month, Sexual Healing with Dr. Marissa on take. My advice, I'm not using it. Get balanced with Dr. Marissa. So in case you were wondering what you just stumbled into, that is what it is. And please do break me apart and put me back together. (laughs) (laughs) As usual, I am totally laying myself on the air table. (laughs) You have made yourself very vulnerable, and I honor that, and I bow to that, too. Thank you. Um, So what I heard was... uh, when, when we feel bad about our bodies, that, that is like shame in its most unadulterated form mm. because that's about our person. And shame is the way we feel about ourselves, not about what we've done, not about what we might do, but about ourselves. Mm. Now, sexual shame gets a little tricky because we can have shame about sex. And that is innate. We are sexual creatures. 
-hmm. So a lot of us are walking around with a sense that there's something shameful about the fact that we are sexual. Yeah. Now, do you think that comes from church? Do you think that comes from religion? Do you think that comes from society? Because I had this thought the other day, what if we never went to church? Like, what if we grew up like the cave, you know, in the cave days when there was not organized religion, when there was not a societal way of, of communicating what the norm is? Yes. How did how did we you know was it sex all the time was it uh, you know we yes we are sexual beings but sort of what is what is okay like what is without all that that stuff what would be like how many times a week would it be <laughs> or, how many times, or is that all we're gonna be doing yeah, it's probably more like how many times a day yes but, but <laughs> So that's a big topic, and I've got a lot to say about that. I don't want to take up your whole show on that, but I will just say briefly that, you know, there's a difference between religion and spirituality. Okay. And organized religion really was the first form of government and therefore the first form of control over large groups of people. And usually when we're trying to control large groups of any uh, sentient being, we either neuter them or find some other way to control their sexuality. This is what we do with domesticated animals. So you might look at the controls on our sexuality as a, a form of domestication, a way of trying to keep us from being fully matured. Mm. Um, so anyway, that's my little philosophical yeah, answer yeah, to your question there. Getting yeah. back to the personal <laughs> here. I think that um, it's so embedded in the culture and has been now for a good 6,000 years. It's kind of pointless to try to figure out, did it come from religion? Did it come from the government? Did it come from my parents? Did it come from the people down the street? The important thing is, how do we get past it? Mm, good, good and point. I'm you know, looking for other models. It is good to find out that there have been some indigenous cultures historically who had a more positive approach towards sexuality. And not surprisingly, the more sex positive a culture, the less violent they are. So we kind of see that violence tends to um, push sexuality into the into the, the darkness of shame. Mm. And, and so if you've got a violent culture, it tends to be sex negative. And who can tell, chicken or egg, which one comes first there? Okay. They kind of feed into each other. Mm -hmm. If you as a human being want to get past your sexual shame, the first thing really is to sort out the fear, the guilt, and the shame. So, And I heard all three when you were talking about how you feel about getting involved sexually. Mm -hmm. So the fear... That's a really valid point that we need to take time to look at. Am I afraid of getting pregnant? Am I afraid of getting a, a sexually transmitted infection? Mm -hmm. Am I afraid of getting emotionally involved and getting my heart broken? And to really yeah, take and, and, and all three of those, of those, all three of those are a no, because I know how to take care of myself. You know, physically, okay. I know I, I no one can break my heart because my I, you know my heart is. It belongs to my UPS man, my universal power source, and so it can't get broken. I know that I'm a precious child of the universe, uh -huh. and so so there's not fear of those. But when a guy says, "I want to," uh, or "You're so hot," okay, and and or another one said, "I, I want to comfort you." You know, let's let's. Why is sex so bad if it's just two people? <laughs> Shut up, Jarvis. <laughs> He's, my sound engineer is laughing. And, oh and I'm not even going to ask you why you're laughing. But, like, you know, I just want to comfort you and, you know, touch you. And I want you to touch me. And and then, you know, if we have sex, it's it, it's not it's not that big of a deal. You know, I, I and I say, oh, do you have a relationship? And, well, I ha I'm living with a friend. And and that doesn't mean anything. You know, that, that doesn't mean that I cannot have... A, a, a sexual, meaningful, comforting session with you. And oh. so there's a part of me going, well, you know, that kind of makes sense. And, and do I have some desire to want to have a physically intimate uh, 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 encounter? Mm -hmm. uh, what is wrong with doing that? Uh, I'm afraid, though, that if I do that, that I'm going to feel shame afterwards. Well, I think you're asking the wrong questions. Okay, good. Um, and, I, and I also kind of hear you uh, shaming yourself for being a little reticent to have uh, unattached sex. What, what I'd like to invite you to do is to think about um, getting to know yourself a little bit better and, and 
so there's kind of this way sometimes we can come to ourselves with the kind of a, a modern uh, approach to sexuality that bypasses our own innate desires and wishes. Mm -hmm. And um, I've experienced so many different relationship modalities, polyamory, monogamy, uh, marriage, being single, serial dating, um, serial monogamy. And um, I love that I'm able to give myself that kind of choice to choose. But in the choosing, it doesn't mean that I choose to do everything that I consider um, a valid choice for human beings to make. Mm -hmm. My needs and my desires change over time, and I want to honor that. So I think the first thing really is to decide what really resonates with me. The question isn't, would that be so bad? The question is, what would be my highest sexual expression right now? What would be the thing mm. that would fulfill my fantasies on every level? Because Marissa, you're not somebody who settles for not bad. You, you <laughs> are somebody who is striving How'd you know? for the very best. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yes. And that, that keeps me single. <laughs> oh, oh, that's a terrible, I, <laughs> terrible belief. <laughs> Yeah, well, I I had two thoughts. The Brad and me said, well, I, I I try everything once, and I haven't tried serial polygamy, so that's that's one. But uh, seriously, uh, it, you make a good point. What do I want? And I guess what I what 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 confuses me, and I don't know if any of my listeners, uh, if I'm preaching to the choir or not, um, I I I'm not consistent in what I want, and this is the fear is like. When I'm talking to him, I'm thinking, okay, that sounds like a good idea. And then literally the next day, I go, mm, I, I don't think I can do that. I, like, I'm like shocked that, at myself that I could think that way. And then, and then at the other and then I, and then I change my mind and go, well, I know I can't do that. So I guess the fear is I, I, I'm afraid that I'll, I'll change my mind and then I'll feel bad about what I've done. Or what I so here's here's another question that I, that comes up for me, and okay. that is, in how what's the power dynamic between you and men? Do you find yourself feeling seduced by their perspective or their viewpoint, especially in the heat of passion, or especially when you're being uh, flattered, or do you feel like you're able to stand in your own uh, core identity and what it is that you want, regardless of what the men uh, who are coming towards you want or desire yeah. because yeah. I think that can really cause us to have some buyer's remorse. Do you yeah. see what, see what yeah. I'm saying? Yeah. No, no, no. I know exactly what you're saying. It's yeah. this thing. It's, 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 I want you to tell me that I'm hot. I yeah. want you to find me attractive. Right. But when you say it, I'm like, whoa, Nelly, slow down. Right. I don't know if I can handle this. And so, yeah, I'm the one that's conflicted. I'm the one that's confused and I'm admitting it to all <laughs> that, like, but because because I know that I'm not alone I know that there are women I mean the best compliment I get for for these this series is there's so many women out there who are like oh my gosh you're saying what's in my head you're telling my story and so I use this to to try to help heal myself as well as try to to, to help heal the the you know this and it's and it's so annoying. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, it is. It is. And you know what? I, I I'm thinking about. It. See, I I've, I've learned to pull in um, attention, sexual attention, and I've learned also to turn it off. Mm -hmm. And um, one day I was recently I was walking down the street, and I was really open to allowing sexual attention to come in. Mm -hmm. And I was feeling really good about that and enjoying it. And I'd forgotten one of the reasons I learned to turn it off, which was that sometimes it was it would drive, pull in some very scary stuff. Hmm. And I'm walking down this street. There's nobody but me and my dog. And these, these two guys standing there. And they're way younger than me, like 20 years younger than me. And they start flirting. And their flirtation starts to go in a direction that feels so overt and aggressive mm -hmm. that I actually started becoming afraid for my personal safety. Mm. And then I remembered one of the reasons 
that I learned to turn that off mm -hmm. because sometimes it was actually very frightening. Yes. And, and just to reveal something about my history, um, I'm a rape survivor. So okay. I'm pretty, you know, averse to putting myself in hazardous situations. Mm -hmm. The vast majority of women um, have had some kind of sexual harassment or sexual perpetration. They may not consider themselves incest survivors or rape survivors like I am, but there has been something that they tolerated or agreed to that they didn't end up enjoying. Mm. And mm. I think that's so important for us as women to, to claim that, to understand that, and that we have to find a way to empower ourselves, empower ourselves so that we're not um, going to fall prey to that. Yes. And once, that, once those boundaries are in place, once that sense of confidence is there, then you can allow those compliments to come in mm -hmm. without it creating basically a a place where you're going to be out of balance mm -hmm. or off balance mm -hmm. and well, wind up saying yes to something that you that really you want to want say to. no to. Right, right. And that and also means that you need to kind of have a menu in your mind. What are the things that I do sexually? What are the things that I do not do mm -hmm. sexually? Mm -hmm. And if I know what those things are, then if somebody starts trying to talk me into it, right, I, my no is going to be there. Right. But it, we also, as women, have to learn how to have a no that doesn't um, create a disconnect. And because too often we're, we're really wanting to keep that connection. Mm -hmm. So then we end up saying yes when we mean no. Right. To, right. And it may not to be, you know, we may want yes to sex, but maybe we didn't want yes to a particular kind type of sex. Yes, yes. Yes, yes. <laughs> <laughs> now, now that brings up something that I have two teenage daughters, beautiful girls, 18 and 16. And I had seen in, in so the questions that uh, you had sent me, one of them was sissy shaming and uh, SLUT shaming, since I'm going to be broadcast on CNBC with FCC uh, uh, regulations. So... S-L-U-T shaming, I asked my daughters what that was because I'd never heard that term before. And oh. they they described it, you know, that uh, you're, you're, you are being accused of asking for it. Therefore, if something happens to you, uh, it, it's not the guy's fault because you, by dressing provocatively or having a reputation or something like that, right. that's your. So I didn't know that. That was new for me. So, so, but I linked it when you were talking about your experience, and I'm sorry that you had to go through that. Uh, that that's uh, I can't imagine, and and uh, I, I I applaud you for being able to admit to not admit to it, but share it so that there's people who I know who are listening who have also been through it and to, to inspire and give hope that you can heal from it. Mm -hmm. So, so what do you say to women who, who have been told that, well, you asked for it, mm -hmm. you asked for it by the way you were dressing, the way you were talking, because I, I am, I, I do have one experience from my past that I feel some, uh, guilt over where I was, you know, I wear low cut tops. I, I, I actually, um, I know that, you know, I, I, I'm a little more bountiful than the average Chinese woman when it comes to that place. And, and no, I didn't pay for it. So it's natural just in case you were wondering, but <laughs> I, you know, and I, I was very friendly and, and I did flirt I'll admit to that. And he it, it was uh, someone that I worked with. And he told me that he had fallen in love with me. And I was like devastated because I, I you know, he was married. And I, I felt guilty for, I didn't think that I was leading him on. But when I looked at my side of the street, I had to admit that, yeah, I was probably being a little overtly, as you were talking about before, like turning that on, that side of me on. So so then, so there's another thing to feel guilty or shame, shame about. Well, so let's talk about that. I'm really glad that you brought that up because yeah. this is, I really think this is where uh, we, 
we have such a disconnect between uh, men and women too. Um, and, and not just men and women, by the way, I have clients that are of all genders and uh, I just want to, you know, say right, that this, this Absolutely. dynamic between the feminine and the masculine can apply to any gender. Yes, yes, um, yes. And, and it can switch because uh, I personally love to, to channel both masculine and feminine energy and, and I think most of us are more in our wholeness when we can start doing that. Right, right. But and before um, you start, so, I'm, sorry, sorry. Okay. I'm sorry, Veronica. I'm sorry. We, the, yes. We've reached that point in the show where sorry. I have to thank my sponsors who make this show possible. Oh, right. So I apologize for cutting you off, but we will be right back with more of Veronica May. Uh, Monet and shame free zone and guilt and how to heal where we're hurting inside for sexual healing with Dr. Marissa. We'll be back in two peace in and peace out. If you think you don't have the money to start your own business, then I have fantastic news. Now you can own a business that has proven to be a phenomenal success all around the country with very little upfront investment. We're talking the selfie station. Selfie Station is a portable touchscreen photo booth that people and businesses book for weddings, corporate functions, trade shows, proms, promotional events, parties, and more. Selfie Station captures lifelong memories that can be emailed, texted, printed, personalized, and even uploaded to social media. You won't believe how much people will pay you to make your business the life of their party. It's the easiest income you'll ever earn and pays for itself in no time at all. You can start your own business right now. Let Selfie Station be the picture taker, ice breaker and your money maker now as a special introductory offer you get five hundred dollars off the professional package that's right five hundred dollars off selfiestationpodcast.com type in the name of my show dr marissa so i can get credit please thank you selfiestationpodcast.com that's selfiestationpodcast.com and get ready to make money today Did you know that women are capable of over 11 different kinds of orgasms and yet 87% of women are sexually unsatisfied? Did you know that 9 out of 10 couples desire deeper intimacy in and out of the bedroom? If you desire more pleasure, better orgasms, and a more sacred sensual connection, visit DeviWardTantra.com and get your free female orgasm guide to uncover the top three blocks preventing you from having the pleasure, intimacy, and orgasms you crave that's debbiewartantra.com and welcome back you are tuned in to the last week of the month series of sexual healing with dr marissa the new asian dr ruth determined to make pleasure a g-rated and a g-spot rated topic <laughs> and today i am talking about shame guilt and pleasure with a certified sexologist and uh, my therapist my sex therapist for the day veronica monet welcome back veronica oh Ed, i'm glad to be back I'm glad you're doing this really glad to yeah be. thank you thank you so you were about to break some stuff down for me well, we were talking about shaming women mm. for, yes, creating, yes. for creating sexual desire in men. Basically, that's what we we're talking about. And, yes. I, and, and this, is, this has been with us for thousands of years. It's going to take probably, a, I don't know how long to, to get past it. But, you know, it's really, really important that as women, we don't accept that as truth. Mm. It's, there is, why should we be ashamed or guilty or remorseful for being attractive or uh, creating sexual um, desire in another human being. Um, I, as a woman, um, find that there are both men and women who can create sexual desire in me. I'm bisexual. I certainly don't think that either men or women are responsible for the mm -hmm. fact that I feel sexual desire. I don't think that they have to be sexually interested in me just because I feel that way about them. And I certainly would not think that if they dressed a certain way or flirted with me even, that they had misled me and therefore I had a right to do whatever I wanted to do to them. Mm -hmm. But that's the script that a lot of us as women are running yes. around with. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yes. Like like you ask for it. If you if you're being flirty, then you ask for it and you you're not you're supposed to be responsible around that. And here's one thing that I do want to say about the flirtation. Um, because um, 
because I'm bisexual and I've, I've dated both sides, I, I, I think it gives me some perspective to say that flirting is fabulous. I think it can, it can bring life into us. And I think it's, it's part of the, the juice that, that keeps life exciting. And I, I flirt your butts off. <laughs> but, <laughs> but I'm getting permission to flirt. Uh-oh. <laughs> <laughs> but, do it, but do it in a way that honors the person that you're flirting with. Mm-hmm. So if if you and we all have met that person who strings us along, strings us along, and then just drops us right at the end. Mm-hmm. And that's mean. Yeah, that's mean. So if if you are filling a suck hole in your heart uh, and and all this emptiness mm-hmm. and you want somebody else to fill you up and make you feel better. And you just suck that out of them and then walk away. People are going to feel bad about that, whether you were flirting or you were just, uh, you know, crying on their shoulder. If you're taking and taking and taking, right. uh, it feels horrible. Right. right. So make sure that your flirting is a gift that is honoring and respectful. Mm-hmm. And, and, and that's really just about shifting your intention. Mm-hmm. If your intention is that the person that you're flirting with is somebody valuable, they're going to get that. Yeah. Yeah. And even when you walk away and even when you say no, they're still going to feel really good. Right, right, about how you, about what just transpired. Now, yeah. now, we weren't planning on going down this lane, but since you brought it up. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> because I was telling my kids that, you know, this whole, you know, watching the Danish girl and transgender and bisexual and their friends being very open about you know, not only being gay, straight, bisexual, trisexual, I'll try anything. Um, How how did you know when you were like that, that because it is another area of shame, I grew up fundamental Baptist. So darling, I've got a lot, you know, and then my mom was adopted by a Russian Jewish woman and I'm Chinese. So I've just got guilt coming out of my pores. So. It's no wonder I need this show. So it's that's why it's take my advice. I'm not using it. But anyway, so so how did you know? And 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 how would someone know that that was what they they are? I know it's it, it's become so fashionable for women to be bisexual nowadays. Yeah, and, and men too. <laughs> I want men too. Yeah, and men too. I hear about it all the time. So so I'm getting confused. I just saw I just saw a film actually called uh, The Overnight. And, and um, it was definitely introducing that topic for men okay. in, in, a, in, I thought, a very tasteful way. So um, I knew when I got to college, and uh, it had to do with the fact that we all had to share uh, the same uh, bathroom uh, mm-hmm. for taking showers. And I was very distracted by what I was seeing. Did you feel, <laughs> did you feel shame? Did you, did you grow felt- up in... I felt embarrassed and frightened Mm. and I thought if they find out they're not going to trust me and so I I kept it a secret Mm -hmm. and I was terrified that somebody would find out Okay. and I had a long painful coming out. Um, I I didn't come out until I was uh, 29 and it was painful because I would get crushes on girls but I didn't understand why I felt, I didn't even know I was having a crush. Mm And, um, and then it wouldn't actually turn into a relationship. I felt frustrated, confused, and, and of course, so did they. Mm-hmm. So um, until you've actually found out, you know, the truth about your sexuality, you can create a lot of pain for yourself and a lot of confusion and frustration for other mm-hmm. people. But you had, you had an awareness so I guess that's probably because well, because I'm, it's so fashionable. I find myself asking myself, "So yeah. am I? I? I mean, is that is that? Well, I don't think I am, but so well, so you, you have to have an awareness." I you know I wouldn't make a blanket statement like that. I would okay. say if somebody was bi curious, go check it out. But please don't stick with it just because it's fashionable. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, you know, um, if it doesn't sing for you, then don't do it. Yeah. yeah. Um, I think that for me, it was just the reverse. It was like trying not to do it, trying not to do it and mm-hmm. feeling like this was such a big part of me that I just, 
you know, at some point I finally just had to admit it. Right. And when I did, I came out publicly. I wrote for a bisexual magazine for five and a half years, and I got I got involved in the political movement actually for my visibility. Interesting. So, Interesting. And, and at this point in my life, um, I'm very aware of the fact that I'm bisexual because I have attractions to women. But I've in a um, basically a monogamous relationship with a man for five and a half years, and I'm very very happy. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. that's the other thing. Uh, even if you have a, an attraction to both genders, it doesn't mean that you have to act it out. Right. Right. And again, we keep coming back to choice. And, yes. and if you have this ability to remove the shame from all the choices that are available, mm-hmm. you really can come from a place of empowered choice mm-hmm. so that you're not doing things um, because you want to please other people or avoid those feelings of shame, but you're doing it because it really makes you happy. Yeah. And, and I guess that's where I have to make the choice because I don't, like I go back and forth. Uh, I, I really, you know, I preach all the time. It's, it's embarrassing. I tell my, all my listeners, my callers especially, you know, get in a relationship because it's a beautiful thing and, and you don't get that feeling of romance from your parents or your friends or your children. It's a, it's a, a huge dimension of life that is expanding and unfolding. And, and, and then <laughs> I had my girlfriend call me on it the other day. So, you know, why are you so vested in being single? Why, are, why are, are you real? not dating? Why are you, oh, you know, you why know, aren't you practicing what you're preaching? Can I argue with that for just a minute? Yeah. I'm not convinced that you are invested in being single. Tell me why you're invested in being single. Make a case for Be, it. Okay. Because when I get asked out for a date, I think about it for one second and I weigh it with go to dinner with someone that I don't know very well. I don't think we're a match. Uh, oh. And go and and hang out with my daughter and their friends and go see a movie or go to a movie by myself or or sit and do a jigsaw puzzle which I love doing or or anything where I really enjoy being with myself and doing those things and I and I go like this and 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 it is now it's almost never like if I do it I'll do one date and then it's like oh well I knew you know that wasn't that wasn't uh that wasn't worth the makeup. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> can, I, was... can I tell you what I'm hearing? <laughs> what? Or, or more, more accurately, what I feel. Mm. I want to tell you what I feel when I, when I hear you tell me that. I feel very happy for you. My heart expands. Um, I think this woman is making the choices that are right for her. Mm-hmm. And, and I also had this thought that you are preparing for the right relationship that's not here yet. Mm-hmm. Um, if you are out there wasting a bunch of time um, doing dates, I, I got to tell you, I hate dating. I, I've, <laughs> I, I, I am more experienced at dating than probably anybody you'll ever meet. Um, and, and I can't stand it. Mm. Um, I, I loved it at one point. Yeah. It was a lot of fun. Yeah. But I got to a certain stage of my life where dating was like the last thing I wanted to do. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I think the fact that you would rather spend time with your daughter than go on a date with some guy that you don't even think is a a match for you is intelligent. I think it's empowered. Um, I think it speaks volumes of your female power and your acknowledgement of how important your life is and every moment that you spend, you don't want to waste those. Mm-hmm. But do you don't think that's coming from, or that's a cover up for fear about the original thing we talked about at the very start of the show, which is the, the, the that I still feel some, you know, because I don't have the perfect body because, you know, mm-hmm. closer, you know, like false advertising <laughs> that, that is because I, I'm afraid of, how like I you know if I think of myself naked with someone I think of myself thinking not oh is this going to feel good but oh I wonder if he's disappointed because I'm not as hot as I look in my pictures I mean that I know it's it's stupid 
I, I'll be the first that was like stupid, but I'm being honest. I, that is like the, you know, that's proof right there that I am totally screwed up and I'm not, I'm not anywhere close to perfect. And it's a good thing that my show is called Take My Advice. I'm not using it. But, but I'm saying this too, to help those who I know feel the same way, identify and, and, and also to comfort in, in the way that I can to say, this is just, you can't get it wrong. And it's, you can never, it's, you can't get it wrong and um, it, you can't get it done. And so my journey in this, I know, is that, you know. I, I, I actually have a, re- a request, a piece of homework, if you will, oh, that dear. I'd like to make. <laughs> Wait till you yeah. hear what I'm going to do. Okay. Um, what I'm hearing is you're, you're going to kind of muscle through it and push yourself out there. Yeah. Well, I am like on the air, actually. Pat- I understand that, but but can I ask you? Uh, here's what I I feel very protective of your female body because I think it's sacred, and I want it to feel honored and respected and loved and adored. Mm-hmm. And I think that that starts with how we treat ourselves. So I don't know if you um, spend any time pleasuring yourself. And you don't have to answer that on the air if you don't want to. Well, I did tell a caller to do one orgasm a day. Okay. However, however she does that. So, that, so yeah. That's a good answer. So, but here's the thing. There's different ways of doing that. And I try to encourage uh, my female clients to create a sacred divine ritual around mm-hmm. self-pleasuring. Hmm. Okay. So if it starts off with uh, yoga, meditation, uh, Static dancing, um, that's a good place because you're into your body and you're getting out of your head. Mm. Um, Incense or scented candles, uh, mood lighting, uh, the kind of music that you think evokes the sensual aspects of yourself. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then um, fantasies are good, but I like to challenge people to expand their fantasies to other things. Not, not just pair bonding, mm-hmm. uh, but actually realizing your uh, visions for um, the world or for your ultimate career aspirations mm-hmm. or your, okay. perfect, okay. your perfect life where you're actually allowing that up into your head at the moment of orgasm. It can be a, a beautiful thing. Oh, interesting. And to set a standard for yourself where you're going to actually take a half hour to an hour hmm. um, and really come to understand your erogenous zones and get a mirror out, mm-hmm. uh, become familiar mm-hmm. with all your parts. Okay. So, so that you can start to adore what you see in the mirror. Interesting. All right. All right. I see that as homework and we are totally out of time. We're actually <laughs> over, but that was so much fun. Thank you so much, Veronica, for the free, <laughs> the free coaching for me and the homework. And I will, I will, think about doing the homework. <laughs> okay, well, but, uh, question. Should I ask if I have any hot women who would like to be on your dating show? Uh, yeah, that would be... Well, we're going to start with me, actually. And because Dr. Pat Allen always oh, tells me... You. Oh, for me? Oh, I didn't even get that. <laughs> that just... <laughs> uh, uh, I'll get back to you on that. <laughs> get back to me. <laughs> It's very rare that I'm speechless, and that one got me. Thank you so much, Veronica Monet, for coming on Take My Advice. I'm not using it, and boy, I don't know if I'm going to be using anything (laughs) after that, but that was absolutely wonderful. Uh, We are now at the very end of our show with the balance bar. Very, very quickly, I'll be broadcasting live at the 2016 Conscious Life Expo, and guess who I get to interview again? I mentioned before Don Miguel Ruiz. And if you have not uh, been on my Facebook, please uh, become my friend there or go to forbalance.org for all of the things that I'm getting to do. And if you'd like to learn a moving meditation practice with me in Sedona, yes, it is the sixth annual balance retreat in the Vortexes in Sedona, Arizona. And if you register, pre-register by Valentine's Day, great present, hint, hint, you'll save $300. We extended the early bird special. And the Asian Oprah giveaway today is a 30-minute free consultation with my 
special certified sexologist guest today, Veronica Monet. And she will be coaching you and talking to you somewhat like she was to, with me today. So that's a free 30 minute session. And so if you would like to take advantage of that Asian Oprah giveaway, please do. Uh, let's do four balance today. It'll be the first on my guest list at fourbalance.org and put in better sex and the subject line and that will be your gift for today. And finally, round 56 of the 21 day fast from complaining with Dr. Marissa starts February 1st. And if you haven't picked up the companion app called No Complaints, and to help you not complain for 21 days in a row, please do go to Google Play or to the Apple App Store and you can get it for a huge amount called 99 cents. And it does come back with a money back guarantee. And if you don't like it, I promise I'll give you the buck back. So that's, I think, it for the day. Next week, as I mentioned, it is my 200th show. Unbelievable. And to celebrate, I have the power-packed panel of Neil Donald Walsh, Conversations with God, mega bestseller, Dr. Michael Bernard Beckwith, also known as my big brother, who is uh, my favorite teacher, spiritual teacher who founded Agape International Spiritual Center, who has been a guest three times on my show, and then the Bishop Carlton Pearson, another powerhouse packed gospel of inclusion, past guest of mine. If you've missed either of their shows, please go to YouTube or UBN Radio Archives or KCAA uh, Radio.com Archives. You can find me just about everywhere. And don't miss next week's panel and the celebration of my 200 uh, shows on the air, splattering you with hope and happiness. And that's it for today. Take my advice. I'm not using it. Get balanced with Dr. Marissa Pay. That's P for positive, E-I. And remember, it is all about balance. Peace in and peace out. <laughs>